I want to thank our student body and our fans, 60 plus thousand people, and on a beautiful day in Columbus. Uh, to sit through a spring game sometimes that I don't want to be watching it, but uh, we appreciate everyone being here. It's a chance to uh, see some young guys that really haven't played and be quite honest, I'm not sure how much they will play. You know, this is a chance a lot of guys in this program work very hard and to be able to let some guys play and, and catch a pass in Ohio Stadium or, or whatever. Uh, in the big picture of things, uh, it's the right thing to do and, and uh, uh, I'm glad we do that. You know, it's a great thrill for a lot of people. Execution of offense was not, you know, what you like. You know, the offense line, we got a lot of work to do. I kept Taylor Decker out because uh, he had a good spring and I played, you know, he played almost a thousand or over a thousand snaps last year. Same thing with our four starting D linemen. You know, that's not really what spring ball is for, is to just keep beating on people. So they're, uh, I'd be disappointed if we're not one of the better defensive lines in America with those four guys. Uh, they've had a good spring, their coach is really coaching them. Offense line is the one that uh, we got to really go. I mean, we got to really go from here. You know, I saw Jamarco Jones down there, and uh, you know Demetrius Knox is coming in. Brady Taylor, those are three bodies that are going to be coming in in June. And I, I looked him right in the eye. I said, "You're not redshirting. You're playing." And that's hard for an offensive lineman. So we're gonna. That's an area that we have got to get back to where we uh, where we maybe not where we were, but close. Uh, defense. Uh, if you, I hope. The reaction was that they look quicker, they look faster, they trigger on the ball much better than we have in the past. If that's your perception, that's mine as well. And uh, Darren Lee and Chris really are two examples of guys that just, you know, they're developed guys that uh, are ready to send uh, Darren Lee back to New Albany on a one-way bus ticket. He just didn't show up like with the right demeanor. He was a quarterback. And then all of a sudden, about midway through the season, you saw this really natural athlete and great kid start to develop. And, and here he is. It's going to... You know, he'll most likely start for Ohio State. So there's some great storylines. Uh, I'd say we're faster, more athletic in a lot of positions. Uh, Dontre, I was planning on playing him, but he got a little, got stung uh, in, a, in a scrimmage. We had a live scrimmage, a uh, really tough scrimmage on Wednesday, and uh, I just pulled him. And this one, you know, a guy that's kind of banged up who's already kind of earned a spot. Uh, so that's where we're at. Cardell was disappointing. You know, Cardell's had a good spring. I thought he made some misses today, but uh, I'm not going to let that ruin his spring. He's had a good spring for us. And, uh, and uh, Nick Vanette has had a good spring as well. Can I have a, I'll answer any questions for you? Front row, Rusty. Uh, who are you going to analyze running back in particular? What, what you saw, what you didn't see, and where, yeah, we where just the want, order maybe? We wanted to give uh, Ezekiel a handful of reps and then get him out. Uh, the guy that really, really excites me is number four, um, Curtis Samuel. We just got to figure out if he's he got enough. Uh, Size and strength to take the, bounty, the pounding that running backs take. Rod Smith was here, but he's going to—he's focusing on academics. Uh, Briante Dunn did up pretty good, and then you did had Warren Ball that, that did pretty good. So we have some depth there, but uh, I'm anxious. The, the right now, 15 and four, are the two that, uh, and, and we got to see where Rod because Rod was having a very good spring before we had to sit him down for a little bit. And Briante Dunn, so it's still it's still pretty much. Uh, I'm not ready to anoint up a starter yet. Uh, front row left, Steve. Yeah, Coach, you talked about wanting to highlight the wide receivers. Uh, Corey Smith, Michael Thomas each got a few catches in this game, some good plays, some bad plays perhaps. Just what did you see maybe out of that group and those two guys in particular? Not enough. You know, that was, um, uh, that's a little credit to uh, Gary on Conley is one of the most improved players on this team and, and Armani Reeves. We had two pretty good corners out there playing on the one. I can't remember which team they were on. Uh, and Devin Smith and Mike Thomas, you know, and, and then Corey Smith. Uh, we, we, we're not where we need to be. You know, Johnny Dixon, I was, you know, I've, obviously you can see when you throw three balls straight to him, we're trying to get something done. And we didn't, uh, I wanted him to experience a, a play at, at Ohio Stadium. So I guess we're going to try again next year. And the next time he gets to do it, it's going to be re for, for real. Because he's done it a few times in the spring. So it, we're not enough of uh, what we expect. We're, we're, not a, we're not where we need to be. I think we're better than we were two years ago. I'm hoping we're a uh, notch better than last year, but I'm not sure we will be. We've got a ways to go. Far right, Tim. Urban, uh, Rick Juan McMillan, uh, the middle linebacker freshman, uh, he made a couple of huge plays. One yep. was stuff on the goal line, and then the other when uh, Corey Smith fumbled out of bounds in the end zone. But uh, where, what have you seen from him this spring, and did he finish on a high note, in your opinion? Yeah, he, he certainly did, and he's officially in the rotation. Of, uh, you know, he's, uh, you know, he's going to play. You know, he's, uh, you know, it's, I put him in the same category. He's a year younger than Worley and uh, Darren Lee. Both those guys are all, they've earned it. They're playing. Uh, whether he's going to start depends on, you know, him and Curtis are in their battle. Uh, Curtis Grant. Curtis had his best spring. 
And so, uh, but those, uh, he's, earned, he's earned that right. He's, he's not a freshman anymore. He's got to go play. Front row left, Bill. Even with all the missing pieces on offense, are, would you say you're discouraged or disappointed with how they played today? Uh, oh, it's not fair to say discouraged. You know, uh, you have Jeff Hireman, Braxton Miller, Jalen Marshall, Dalen Dontre Wilson all stand next to me, and I tell them they can't play Decker and they can't play, you know, and then I'll go chew out the coaches. You know, it's probably not the best thing to do, but they all know what it is. You know, we want, uh, I, I just wanted to see a little cleaner throwing the ball, and, and uh, we didn't do it, but oh, I'm fine. We had a good spring. Uh, front row, Todd. You're missing those pieces like, Braxton and Hireman and some of those dynamic playmakers that you talked about. How do you evaluate the how do you evaluate this team in this game without having those dynamic pieces out there? It's more of an individual. I'm not trying to evaluate an offense cuz who cares? There's guys out there who will never play, you know, either never play or they're not ready to play now. That's not what I'm not evaluating like I Jerry hands me stats and I'm not sure what to do with these. I don't I don't care. Uh, what I do care is who who's who's physically going to make the plays that, you know, that you can. This is more of like a, it's almost like an individual game today. That's what I wanted to watch. I want to see who's going to compete, who's going to make plays, not who's going to fit into the team concept because we all know what we saw out there. And that's not team, that's not the Ohio State Buckeyes. That's a bunch of people all over the place. Does that make sense? So I was just watching guys. And uh, I have some opinions after today's game. Second row, middle, Kenny. Along those lines, Urban, so did any position battles become decidedly clearer from what you saw today? Yeah, Josh Perry's uh, pretty well done. He's the will linebacker at Ohio State. I think uh, Darren Lee and the other four spots are not. Uh, other two spots are occupied by four people. We have two Sams, Darren, Darren Lee and uh, Worley, and the Mike linebacker, Curtis Grant and uh, uh, Raekwon. Safety, Taekwon, Taekwon's earned a spot, uh, not Taekwon, Tyvis. Tyvis has earned a starting spot. The other one is not. It's Cam Burrows or Von Bell when they get back. Armani's earned a nickel. I don't think we played nickel today, but Armani right now is our nickel uh, corner. We're not been decided. Durant Grant's had a great spring. He got a concussion. He got a, a real slight concussion, I want to say, a week ago or a week and a half ago, so we didn't want to push it today. But he's earned one spot. The other spot's wide open. And D-line, you got your four guys. You got Bosa and Spence, and you got Washington and uh, Mike Bennett. So that's our defensive. On offensive line, you got, uh, you got uh, Pat Elfline and you got our left tackle. You got Taylor Decker. Everyone else is wide open. There's no other spots uh, been taken. At quarterback, you have Braxton Miller backed up by Cardell Jones. At uh, tight end, you got a one-two punch that we're really excited about coaching, and that's Nick Vanette and uh, Jeff Hireman. Receiver, you know, receiver, I, 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 I can't name one that's going to start right now. I can't name you one that's going to start, which is concerning, but it's also uh, somewhat comforting that there, I can name about six that have the ability that can. And those would be uh, Devin Smith, uh, Johnny Dixon, Michael Thomas. Uh, I think Jalen Marshall, before he got hurt, he was having a great spring. Dontre Wilson, uh, and obviously Evan Spencer. So those are guys just off the top of my head that I, you know we have some depth there. Final two questions. Austin on the left. Urban, now that that spring is over, and we saw Braxton, especially today, behind the line of scrimmage more maybe than since we were there. What did you get out of the video camera, the talking to you between plays, all of that this spring? And when he comes back, how wide is the drop off between he and Cardale? When he comes back? When you put him on the field. What's the drop off? What's the drop off between a Braxton Miller to Cardale at this point? Oh, good, good question. Um, I think we've had a great uh, spring. You know, Chip Kelly came in and I had him visit. I, I think there's a misunderstanding. The problem that uh, Braxton had is he never had a grinder in front of him. Does that make sense? If you remember his history is the, the, the normal progression of a freshman quarterback is to come in and play behind a monster, you know, behind the brain of Alex Smith or, you know, one of those kind of great players that does everything right. And uh, he came in and uh, that we had the, the Terrell Pryor issue and he left and then all of a sudden Braxton's the guy. And um, that's not the way to do business. You know, I, it's, it's no one's fault. I'm just saying that's, the, that's setting back more than helping because he didn't, he didn't see how to prepare. And uh, we've been trying to coach him through that. The best uh, example he had was Kenny Guyton, who would really prepare the right way, but he's your backup. So it's, it was kind of a non-functional situation for a while that we worked through. And obviously, I mean, you're talking about the Big Ten Player of the Year two years in a row. He really, I believe he gets it now. He really gets it. And he's a wonderful kid that uh, wants to be great. And so we're doing stuff like the John Gruden football camps with him where 
Uh, you know, I'm going to have a former GM come in and talk to them sometime in June about what they can expect a quarterback to do. So we're working our tails off to get this thing right for him. Folks, okay.